Hi, this is PDF Berger Arcade at BergerArcade.com, and this is tutorial 192. Uh, we're about to jump into our game settings one, our script again, so we can start saving all these new settings. Uh, but something has been brought to my attention that I've left out. Uh, if we go ahead and start the game up and rotate our character, and then try to go to the next hair, uh, it doesn't go in the right spot. And of course, if we just keep rotating, you just get funnier and funnier hair spots. And it's because I just forgot one line of code. So let's go ahead, we'll go back into Mono Develop. I uh, go over to the hair class and where you're instantiating your hair. Uh, so we'll be right here in our load hair mesh method. Now you can put this line anywhere below uh, the object instantiate and uh, well above the if mo part. I'm actually just gonna put it right below the instantiate the instantiation command. And all we got to do is set the hairstyle dot transform dot rotation to be equal to whatever our parent mount is. Uh, in which case we already got it here, which was just called mount dot transform dot rotation. And if we save that off, and we go back in, try that out. And we'll rotate them, and there you go, your hair should be spawning in the right spot. So let's stop that. Now the reason why that was happening is, during the instantiate command here, I'm used to actually setting the position here. So I'd use something like our mount point, if I spell it right, uh, using its position. And then I would also take the mount points transform as well. Or it's uh, sort of its rotation from its transform, and you can put all three in one line. Then you can actually uncomment this, and also, uh, sorry, comment this out, and is also comment this one, out, or just delete them. I'm actually just going to delete them and do it this way. And I'm actually going to move this one up. It really doesn't matter. It's just. In my mind, I like to get everything set up and then start adjusting stuff. So I set it up, set its parent. And to be honest, its parent, we can just set up to mount.transform. Because we've already looked up here what mount is. Uh, so that should work. Let's go back in. We'll just give that a quick whirl. And uh, we'll just start changing hairs. Everything works great. Let's try rotating it a bit. Everything's still working. So there you go. And now let's save that off and start opening up our uh, character or game settings. I think is what I called it last. Uh, we want the actual script, so let's open that up. And let's just start off at the top. Now I want to turn this script into a static script because we don't really need to have a lot of instances of it floating around. Actually we only ever want one copy. Uh, so there are going to be some changes I want to make as well since we're in this script. Uh, and the first one is I'm not going to be needing my, my player spawn point anymore. Originally I was going to put a player spawn point for the player to constantly respawn when they die. And also to tell the game where to start them originally. Uh, I'm just actually going to save a vector 3 for them in their player preps when we get to that point. So I'm probably actually going to get rid of this. And it's also in, I believe, the Game Master script where we're playing around with it. Uh, this was added for convenience because uh, not everyone's going to have their levels named the same as me. So this was just an easy way to do it. Uh, let me see what else was there. Uh, it's not going to be a mono behavior, so I'm not going to need this. Uh, the saving character data, I actually want to break it up into different sections now. I want to have, you know, like save stat or save vitals, save, you know, attribute, save skills, and maybe even save each one individually. And I also want it to be static. So that means everything here is going to have to be turned to static. And I don't want to have to get a reference to the PC anymore. I'll, I'll probably just pass the data in for now. Eventually, I would like to make the PC class static. Uh, so we can just grab it from there uh, but for now we'll just set it up to pass data in and the same with load so that's actually quite a bit of edits 
And for the people that have actually purchased the script and are following along, I don't want to go through and actually have to comment pretty much every single line of code out here. So I'm actually just going to make a new script and I'll just call it Game Settings uh, 2. So let me just shrink some of this up. I'll just make a new one. And it's called Game Setting 2. I guess technically it could have just called the game setting because uh, I'm leaving off the S. But that might be a little confusing for some, so we'll just call it game setting 2. Now this will not inherit from auto behavior. So we don't need the start and the update. Uh, we're probably not going to need the collections. Uh, well, let's just leave them in for now. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make it static so we no longer have to instantiate the class and we're going to want to make a static constructor and to start off with let's just have um, well, the stuff we're working on uh, which is the hair and all your different body parts that you're saving from your uh, customization scene. Uh, I'm just going to start off with the hair. Uh, let's make it public, static. It's not going to return anything. And I'm just going to say save. Uh, we could do them separately. Let's do them separately for now. Hair color. And that's going to take an int. And I'm just going to call it color, all lowercase. Actually, I'm going to just call it index. That's really what it is. It's just the index of the hair we have. Uh, we're also going to need a load for it. So let's make our public. Oh, sorry, static. And we're going to return an int. Wow. Can't think and type today. Public static int load hair color. And we actually have to return something here, so I'm just going to say return zero for now. Uh, if we don't put that in when we go over to the console after we've saved, we'd get an error message saying that it doesn't return anything. So for now, we'll just fill it in with return zero. And let's also do a public static void save hairstyle or hair mesh, one or the other. Uh, let's go with mesh. And again, I'm just going to use an int index. And we'll also want to load for that. So public static int load hair mesh int index. Now you notice these are actually all the the same uh, The same format, like the, the saving of the hair, the saving of the, uh, so the hair color and the hair mesh. So we could probably make one function and generalize it a little bit later on. Uh, but for just a quick prototype, I'm just going to not worry about that and just actually make the functions. So again, we're going to want to return zero. And I'm going to make uh, one more. Well, I guess two more because I want to load for it. I also want one that saves it all. So public static void save hair and this will take an int and I'm going to call this mesh and another int for color so this will save both color and uh, the mesh at the same time and we'll want to load for that as well now Actually, no, I don't. So if we do, we'd have to make an array or return an array of ints, which is fine. We could, uh, but we could just load them up separately. I just want to keep it really simple. As uh, so for now, I just want to work with this. I do want to have uh, this functionality put in here where we're actually saving out the data for our stats and attributes. So let me see. Let's start off by having one for the name. And 
this will take a string, which we'll call name, and a return. And let's do one that just does all the attribute, well, all the F. There's gonna be times where we only wanna save one attribute and kind of a waste to save all of them if we just need the one. So we're eventually gonna want it, so let's at least template it in. And for this, we're gonna to wanna to get the attribute name, which I'll just call name. And we're also going to want the actual attribute as well. Now I believe I actually put the name in the uh, attribute now, at least the string version. Oops, we'll just call this attribute. Uh, I'll take a little look at that later on, but I, right now I just want to get the basic um, uh, syntax of what, what we're going to be looking at with that function. So we're also going to need a public load. And this will return a tribute. And for this, we're just going to pass in the name. So we ask for a certain attribute, and it just returns that one for us. And I'm also going to want to do the exact same thing. For, well, I'll just do all of them at once as well. So public static uh, void save attributes. And this is going to take an array of attributes. We'll want to load for that. Uh, which is also going to return an array of attributes. Uh, let me get some of these attribute return types down. So that'll get rid of the error there. And the errors that I'm talking about, if you don't, when you have returning types, when you're prototyping this out and you don't uh, put something into return, if we come over, we've actually got two here. One for return on the name, because I'm supposed to be returning a string and I'm not. So we can just say uh, return, whoops, and I'll just use double quotes. And that will go away. Then we got one down here for the loading of attributes. So I'm just going to create a small array of, of attributes. So I'll just say attribute att is equal to, I uh, should be able to say new attribute. And we'll also make another new attribute. So I'll just make two empty attributes and then return att and did that work yes it did all right so we've got the attributes uh let's move on uh we have skills and also vitals so i'll do vitals next and they're actually the exact same except instead of save attribute it's say vital instead of attribute name it's vital name instead of being a tribute it's a vital and we'll just go through that's a vital load vital and vital and vital Probably would have been faster. Well, no. Uh, probably is faster actually. Just copy them and 
to change stuff. And I do actually want to keep these uh, the naming conventions for our variables reasonably sane. And this will return an array of idols. This will be a new vital. Now here all I'm doing is creating a new vital that's just completely empty. It's going to be set to whatever the constructor has. And I'm just doing it just to, as a temporary placeholder just for something to return. And then let's also do skills. Uh, so save skill. And this will be skill name. Skill and my variable name will be called skill. And this will be a skill. Load skill. And skill name. And we'll return a new skill. Save skills. will be skill and skill an array of skills <laughs> uh, load skills I guess technically we probably could have just made this uh, base stat an array of base stats because all of our uh, all these classes are actually derived from the uh, base stat. And I would have saved a little bit of uh, typing, but for now we'll just do it this way since it's already done. Oops, I accidentally shrank the text. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, up a little bit more around there. And there we go. I think we have all the functions that we are going to want at least for now prototyped in obviously there's still more because uh, let me go back in I forgot to save it uh, I still have a lot of settings for my character that I haven't done but let's get these ones done and after a while it's going to become quite repetitive so you should be able to easily implement whatever other pieces you want I am going to go through and do all of mine so stuff like clothing and stuff like that uh, you will see how I'm doing mine but uh, like I said, people are going to have a lot of different things for their character customization that I won't. Uh, but anyway, we'll go through at least the ones that I'm using and we'll keep the same format, something really simple so it's easily expandable for you to use for whatever you want. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.